Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, we'll talk about the small world phenomenon. For many years, humans have lived in hunter-gatherer communities. These were very small groups, and so everyone was connected to everyone else. Today, many of us live in large-scale societies with millions of people. A key question then is, how cohesive are these societies? Do people actually know each other? One way to approach this question is to think about the following situation. Suppose we randomly take out two persons from a large-scale society, let's say Amy and Orlando. They don't know each other, of course, they're complete strangers. The key question is, are Amy and Orlando somehow connected? And if so, how many handshakes or steps are needed to connect the two? This question was posed in a famous Milgram Trevor study done in the late 1960s. In that study, they selected a target person, a stockbroker from Boston, like Orlando in our example. And then they asked people, like Amy, to send a letter to someone who they thought knew the stockbroker in Boston. So the starting person might send a letter to a friend of her who perhaps lives in Boston. And then this friend might send it to another person and so forth until the letter eventually arrives in the mailbox of the stockbroker. The key finding of their study was that people needed only five persons to reach the stockbroker. So that means six steps in total. And more recent follow-up research using data from Facebook suggests that two random strangers are separated by less than five steps. This stylized fact is today known as six degrees of separation, or the small world phenomenon. So how can we understand this phenomenon? Now, at first sight, it seems very easy to understand. People have around 500 connections, as we have seen. So in three steps, Amy can reach already 125 million people. In four steps, she can definitely reach Orlando, even when they live in a society with over 300 million people. But this idea overlooks an important fact, namely that we live in communities, in clusters of social relations that are highly connected. Our friends are connected to people we already know, and we have seen how large the densities are within friendship networks. So our friends do not connect us to 500 new people. So then we have a puzzle. If we live in communities, how then is it possible that we are connected to random strangers within just five steps? How can Amy reach Orlando if they navigate in entirely different clusters of social ties? The answer to this puzzle is to be found in community bridging ties. These are ties between people of different communities. The members of the two different communities can reach each other in just a few steps or handshakes because of this single community bridging tie. According to Granovetter, such links between different communities are often weak ties, not strong ties. Weak ties provide shortcuts to different communities, and this makes them so important, so strong in the words of Granovetter. And that's why he speaks about the strength of weak ties. Weak ties connect us to people far away, to entirely different communities. In summary, we live in a small world. This means that we are embedded in clustered networks locally. We live in communities. And at the same time, we're also connected to people anywhere in the world because of those community bridging ties. The implication of this small world is that information can spread fast and globally but also that 7 billion people can infect you in just a few handshakes. Okay, that's it. Thanks for listening and take care.